You're listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast, episode number 195. We're talking about showing up for others with an energy of love. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Jen Rydae, former burned out mom of six turned happiness whisperer. And I'm here to help you get off that hamster wheel and make time for yourself without the guilt so you can live a balanced, calm, heart-centered life. With over 2.5 million downloads, this is the Vibrant Happy Women Podcast. Hey, ladies, welcome to another episode of Vibrant Happy Women. I hope good things are happening in your world and that you're seeing all the positivity and love and fun happening in your life and around you. See the good, feel the good. And if it's hard for you to do that right now, I'm glad you're here because I have a great guest for you today. Her name is Rachel Stubbe, and I met her through the Vibrant Happy Women Club. One of the first things I noticed about Rachel is her energy. Girl, this girl has energy and positivity, and she's truly a people person. Maybe not a full-on extrovert, but she loves to give love and energy to others, especially other women. And you're going to hear that in this interview. I always love listening to women share their stories as they move step by step from maybe a low point to finding their way out. And one of the most important ways that Rachel found her way out of a low point was to shift her focus from off of herself onto serving other people in an energy of love. And that is a foolproof proven way to increase joy in our lives. And what a perfect time right now during the holiday season to shift that focus just a little bit onto other people. And I know, I know sometimes you think, I don't have time for that. I'm just trying to get everything done. I'm trying to manage my life. I have so much to do. It doesn't have to take much time at all, though. It's just a little focus, a kind word, a little hug, whatever it is, shifting a little bit of your attention and energy onto others will bring you greater joy. Well, you're going to love Rachel's advice and her story of doing just that. So let's go ahead and dive into this interview. Hi, friends. I am talking with Rachel Stubbe today. She is a Texas-based family portrait photographer, a self-proclaimed art nerd, and ridiculously happy wife and mom. In the midst of growing her family, she is learning to trust God throughout the journey. Rachel has a passion for empowering women, and she's currently making a pivot to follow her own dreams. In her downtime, you can find Rachel chasing her lightning-fast toddler and enjoying Taco Tuesday with her husband. I said it like that because LeBron James calls it Taco Tuesday. And so I think you're really cool for liking Taco Tuesday. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Oh my gosh. Thanks for having me, Jen. I'm honored to be here. (laughs) Everyone's like, LeBron James? Who? What? Okay. Well, that's my thing. Taco Tuesday is cool. I love it. (laughs) Let's dive into a quote or motto that inspires you, Rachel. Okay. So I picked one from Morgan Harper Nichols. I love her. She's a writer and a visual artist and she's just so cool. And the quote is, this is a season she will make beautiful things. Not perfect things, but honest things that speak to who she is and who she is called to be. Mm. So being a photographer, do you feel like you get to live that quote to some extent? Oh, absolutely. I think it's so cool that you get to like go create things. And sometimes they're not, especially if you're ever in wedding photography, because it's a mile a minute and it may not be perfect, but it could be like really beautiful in the moment. Yeah. For sure. And weddings, everyone goes to so much effort to make it beautiful. And then you get to capture that Mm -hmm. in a special way with your eye. So I like that. Well, tell us how you got started with photography and take us back to your low point. For sure. So I kind of started out and I think I have a really sweet start to photography in my world. My husband actually bought me a camera, my first camera. And at the time, I remember him thinking like, oh my gosh, this is such a big purchase for us. Little did he know, like that was like probably the least expensive thing I own now as far as like photography equipment. But he got me this camera and he's like, okay, I just want you to take beautiful pictures of our life together. Like I know this is something you're passionate about. So you love art, let's do this. And so fast forward, I end up being that like really on it guest at a wedding, my friend's wedding where she had this really low key event and I'm like trying to take pictures with her and I can't quite make the camera do exactly what I wanted. So I start 
trying to look for some clarity in like how to make it work. And <laughs> once I figured that out, I start saying like, okay, how am I going to make this work? And I actually really vividly remember we were in Europe on a vacation with our family. And while I should be out like fun trapping in the hills, like literally is that beautiful. I'm sitting there and I'm like hitting my knees saying, okay, what am I supposed to do with this God? Like, where am I supposed to go with this? And I literally said out loud, okay, when we get back, I'm just going to enjoy the rest of this trip. But when we get back, if I'm not supposed to do anything with this gift that you've given me, if it's just supposed to be something that I enjoy for myself, then I will give it up. But if you give me these signs or something happens, like I'm totally going to follow it. So I come back and I dove in and I actually found like this really incredible networking society in Houston. And I end up having a long chat with the owner and she leads me to this opportunity with her friend. Mm -hmm. And her friends actually, she's helping run this networking society. And she says she has this friend who could use somebody who could intern. Mm. So I just go for it. I went actually to meet her. She just put out randomly, hey, does anybody want to be kind of like a fresh body in the background? They were doing a styled shoot and occasionally you need people just to be in the photographs. So I was like, yes, I want to meet you. I want to do this. Let's just go forward. So flash forward. And I actually, after a couple of meetings, ended up like helping to run that networking society because I don't know, I just have this personality that sometimes I jump into things. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can relate. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. I was going to say you have that energy too, where you're like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I end up pregnant, like working two jobs. I'm interning for this fabulous company and it's like this woman run photography group and I'm really loving kind of just the busyness of the season, but I'm pregnant, right? So I'm just envisioning coming back from this pregnancy thinking like, this is it, get ready world. Like it's my first wedding back and it's going to be great. And I actually had just a really devastating experience of failure where I was unable to return a large portion of the bride's images from the morning. And frankly, I took it really hard. At this point, I'm a new mom, I'm having trouble sleeping, I'm not caring for myself, like I was just completely overwhelmed in this situation. And I didn't know at the time, but I was actually struggling with PPD as well. So postpart this, postpartum depression, if anyone doesn't yeah. know what PPD is. Okay. Wow. That must have been horrific to <laughs> lose wedding photos and then have to tell them and you're already overwhelmed. And then how did you figure out you had the PPD? So I just was going through and through a lot of it, I felt like I was failing. And that's not really kind of my personality. Mm -hmm. I just felt really overwhelmed. And I didn't have a lot of what people say about me is they're like, okay, you're just this joy. Like when you walk into a room, like there's this joy that you love to bring into a room, no matter what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Like, mm, yes. I just couldn't get past it. If I could say that, like, it was just really hard. And I just felt like I was failing in my business and I was failing as a mom and just, it was really overwhelming. I feel like a lot of us, whether we have PPD or not, go through that place when we're first time moms. So for anyone listening who might be there right now, what were your steps to move through that as fluidly as possible? With PPD and going back into business or with PPD and just regaining my happiness or what do you Yeah, mean? I think all of it. I think the business, the happiness, the balance. Yeah, all of it. So I think for me, it meant just kind of a surrender. Mm -hmm. I had to just realize that it was bigger than me and it wasn't like permanent, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I remember just having a moment where I word vomited to my friend that I felt like I was failing. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh my gosh. And it's funny because I tell people this and they always say, I would have never guessed that about you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, you don't usually walk into a room and be like, hey, I have PPD, you know, like you're, yeah. uh, <laughs> it was just something that I think I had kind of struggled silently with and I wish I hadn't. And 
I think just being really open for me, just really being open about it. And like, instead of putting up that barrier between like my friends and my husband and everything that was giving me support and happiness, like Mm -hmm. I just had to tear that down. Yes, you had to, you said surrender. And then really you had to speak your truth and not hide. Ooh, that's hard. Ooh, tear down the walls. Here I am in all the messy middle of of whatever this is. (laughs) Yes. That's oh, good. for sure. We'll keep going. What happened next? So again, you know, I'm just hitting my knees on this. You know, it was kind of my solution to just hit pause, say, okay, I need to just figure this out. Like, how can I focus? And it came to me that what I needed to do was serve others. So in this time, I just had to breathe, give myself some grace, take some perspective and just be a new mom. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I've kind of done these past couple years. And I worked behind the scenes, actually like blogging and editing. And I do a ton of second shooting so that I can work on weekends. Mm -hmm. And it's been really powerful because it allows me to kind of show up as love for other women. And it's cool to support them and like bring joy to their businesses. And it's nice to actually be like, I think it's really fun. I'll see my work in magazines. And I'm like, Oh, cool. We did that together. Like, that's so fun. I don't know. It really was uplifting. So that phrase show up as love for other women. Tell us different ways you're doing that in your life. And specifically with your business. Oh, my gosh, for sure. Well, that's definitely a Bob Goff, where he talks about becoming love. Oh, okay. I've heard good things about him, but I haven't ever read his books yet. Oh, my gosh true favorite. Like I love that idea of showing up as love for other people. So one of the things I love to do as far as second shooting is I come into a room and I say, how can I support you? And Mm. as a creative, I think sometimes like you don't know. And so sometimes that's an overwhelming question for people when they're working. They're like, uh, I don't know. But I've had a couple people say that's just really refreshing that you don't come in and like your first question is you're there early and you want to know like, how can I make this day go as best as possible for you? And then whether it's carrying bags or whatever you're doing, like you're doing it in support of them. It's so smart too, because for a photo shoot, the person being photographed, unless they do it all the time, is in a complete state of overwhelm and self-doubt. And really, that's the best thing you could do to get those quality photos is to get them feeling more comfortable. So great approach for sure. (laughs) Smart approach. Oh my gosh, for sure. I find being in front of the camera terrifying. So I try to do it at least once a year so that I really remember how that feels. So you're like, Oh, what are you doing? How is my hand? Where is my hair? Like, you know, that it's so intimidating. So I absolutely try to get that. (laughs) Well, I once saw a photo shoot of a, a model, a male model. And that blew my mind because there was a kind of a clicker or a beeper and he had to be in a new pose every time it beeped. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. And it was automatically, the cameras were automatically flashing on right after each beep. And so it blew my mind. I don't know if you do that kind of photography, but crazy. No. Crazy. Oh my gosh. That would be so intimidating. No, it's a lot of more. Oh my gosh. The one thing that I love about photography for me and how I work is I love, it's almost like empowerment. I love when you can show someone like you are really beautiful, like startlingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And look at these moments, especially when it's between two people or like families or anything like that. When you can show people that and they look at the back of the camera and they're like, oh my gosh, I look great. And it's like, yes, you do. You're so amazing. And I don't know, that's for me, definitely my favorite thing. Yes. Photography is a form of empowerment. There we go. They're quotable by Rachel Stubbe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like it. I like it a lot. So photography is empowerment, but now you're really, you know, mentioned photographing women and thinking about how you can support them. And and I know now you're shifting and pivoting. What is that looking like for you? Right. So now I'm making a pivot and ultimately there's this big grand idea that I have in my head and I'm figuring out how to lead to that. But in the interim, I am rebranding my business. And I'm kind of in the messy middle of it, of figuring out how do I rebrand my business and do all of this. And we actually just found out we're pregnant with baby number two. (laughs) The wrench in the plan, but not really. It could be an opportunity. Yes, Yes. very tiny, adorable wrench in the plan. So (laughs) we 
we're originally planning to kind of finish our family, but this is all, you know, what does this look like? Like rebranding all of this stuff. So for me, the first pivot is going to be rebranding to more motherhood focused things. And then ultimately I would love to create a space, like a physical space where women can come together and create joy together, where they can be creative and vulnerable and just really feel empowered by the things that bring them joy. So smart. Let me tell you why. I was recently talking to someone and she said, oh, why aren't there more in-person things like your Vibrant Happy Women Club? I love it. It's amazing. But why doesn't something like that exist in person? And then here comes Rachel with your amazing idea. I mean, that's something that could, like a gym, become a chain or, or a, a um, what's the word with an F? Mm -hmm. Franchise? Yeah, or a franchise. Exactly. That's cool. So yeah, you get the fun of creating the idea, trying it out, tweaking. Yeah. Well, I guess you're right. having your baby. I your yeah. <laughs> I'm helping you create it. But... You're like, we can franchise this. I'm like, I love it, Jen. Let's do it. <laughs> if it has a cool name and people understand the purpose, they'll totally do it. People go to gyms for that same purpose. They're just doing a different activity there. So I like it. For sure. It does have a cool name. I, it does. We're in the process, it does. We're in the process of actually doing some legal stuff to kind of sort it out. So I can't quite share that yet, unfortunately, but it does have a cool name. So Hey, and it would be mug worthy and t-shirt worthy. It would be very cool. No way. Yeah. Don't share the name. We don't want someone to steal it. You're smart. <laughs> right. You just never want to be like, hey, it's this. By the way, not totally trademarked yet. <laughs> you know, I like that one of your strategies for pulling out of that depression space was to serve other women. And then you had that opportunity in photography to ask, how can I support you? How can I be of service to you? And then that mindset has opened you up to receiving even this bigger idea of creating this business where women, you know, come together, get to be creative, vulnerable, empowered. It's brilliant. But it started with you putting your focus outside of yourself and on the idea of helping and serving and supporting. I think that was kind of your first step. Would you agree? Or do you see other steps in that process? Oh my gosh, for sure. I love, there was a recent interview you did where someone who was like, I just started, what was the, like the business in her backyard where she's like, I was just giving and now I'm doing all these things. And I think that it just can start from a really authentic place. That was a question when I was leading the networking group, that's a question a lot of people went like, okay, so let me get this straight. You went from like, hey, I've barely taken a couple classes, I've shot a couple weddings, and now you're working with people who've been in the industry 10 years. What? Like explain, how do you, middle? Middle? Do you want to explain the middle? And I'm like, okay, so I showed up for them. And it wasn't about me. It wasn't about mm -hmm. me furthering my agenda. It was about me being really hopeful to learn and me being willing to like lug things uphill if I had to. It was, I just want to learn and grow and I want to support you. Like at the end of the day, the best part of it was, hey, you get to really be a part of this. You get to create something beautiful and support people. It's a really incredible opportunity. And I think having that mindset really furthered it along in a lot of ways, just like you're saying, like when you're having that gift giving mindset, you're not so much focused on the end result. So sometimes you can jump ahead in things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can almost see that on your gravestone someday, Rachel. Not that I want to talk about that, but she showed up for them and it wasn't about her. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. That is really beautiful. Yeah, it's a mantra. Teach that to your kids. I'm going to teach that to mine. It's a good one. I show up for them. Don't make it about you. Yeah. Well, my husband is from Iowa, so they're very big on having pre-laid plots. So I can tell him, hey, I got it. Take care of it. Go put it in it's done. <laughs> well, before this interview, you know, you could almost have that be your joint headstone because didn't your husband go out and buy you a microphone when I asked you to be on the show and took care of that? He showed up for you. It wasn't about him. So sweet. Oh my gosh. Yes. He is the most selfless person I have honestly ever met. He is that person that you call him and you're like, um, I need help. Like my mom does this all the time. She'll be like, help. I need, oh gosh, what was one of the random ones? She needed him to build a ramp because my grandparents were having trouble getting down a stair and he just showed up and built it. He no, was like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. He's just that person. He's, he's handy. Very, 
Yeah. Oh, he's super handy. Now, watch out for him. The day might come when he realizes he needs boundaries. So you can be the one to help him build some. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I definitely do have to be like, okay, not today. <laughs> you can do that tomorrow. That's okay. But he's definitely like a goal oriented person. Uh -huh. He's like a Saturday checklist person. Uh -huh. And I'm like a Saturday waffles person. So it is. Oh, very yeah. That you are my husband and I am your husband. That's uh, I'd much rather be the waffles person. And I'm slowly learning. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny you say that. I really love not to throw back to a bunch of episodes, but talking about, and I know you've mentioned this too, about having like more male energy. That happens to me a lot where people are like, you're so much like my husband. I love that about you. And I'm like, uh, yep, I definitely <laughs> have that like more hunter energy at times. Uh -huh. And it is funny. That's cool. That's really awesome. Tell us a little bit about your favorite way to relax and recharge besides Saturday morning waffles. Oh, for sure. Pedicures. There oh. is a place right around the corner from my house and my friend discovered it and we like to go there and I don't know, they put like this hot neck roll thing on your neck and I swear it smells like cinnamon and you can get like total scrub relaxation and they even do like a neck massage. It is amazing it's like a whole body experience it's uh, fantastic. that sounds amazing especially with the scented towels and stuff that's smart mm -hmm. it goes along with the waffles it smells like cinnamon oh yum that's really good what is a time when you followed your intuition and kind of felt led to do something so funny enough it actually if you want to talk in relationship to this new business I was headed up to help behind the scenes at a workshop and I just had this like impeccably renewed energy. I knew something was going to happen. Like, so I get in my car and I'm driving and I'm blaring the music because I'm that driver and I actually got pulled over for a speeding <laughs> ticket. Oh no. And I'm a warrior by nature, but I didn't worry about this at all. Like I legitimately thanked the cop for the ticket, like told him I appreciated what he was doing and just kept driving. Like it didn't even phase me at all. That's the kind of like, I'm going to do this energy. And while I was there, we're going around at this round table and everyone's talking about photography and what their aspirations are and what their goals are with photography because it's a photography related workshop. And it comes to me and they ask me like, what do you want to do? And <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. What if it's about empowering women? And one girl goes, oh, I got you, girl, like boudoir. And I was like, wait. No. <laughs> That's empowering? Okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, no, not boudoir. Like, what if it's not photography? Mm. And yeah, so this is just this kind of big thought. And I blurted out. I think I also followed that by like, is anybody else sweating? Like, I am just a nervous sweater when I talk to you. And it was so funny. But I just said that out loud. And it was the first time that I had kind of put words behind this idea and that I had definitely said it in front of a group of people. And everyone, it was so funny. Everybody just goes, well, Rachel, do you know that's what you're supposed to do? Like you're that person, like you love, I have kind of like notorious thank you cards mm -hmm. <laughs> because they go off onto a tangent and end up like, I just really appreciate your friendship and oh my gosh, I can't tell. And I've had people say like, wow, I kept your thank you cards because you just like, they were uplifting. And so I had so many people when I started talking about this a little bit more, were like, that's what you're supposed to do. Like it's, I can't believe now you're saying it. It's really obvious, but mm -hmm. your superpower. And I find that when it's truly a superpower time and time again, the person doesn't even know it and others have to tell them, oh, oh, I thought everyone could do that. And that happened to you. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I love the way you put that. I love when you can see somebody's superpower. So women's empowerment. I can just see Rachel lifting women one-on-one -on -one, in groups, in communities, in our country, the world. I can just see you in that energy of lifting, you know? Oh, I love it. Thanks, Jen. I like your vote of confidence. Oh, you've got this, girl. Boudoir or otherwise. <laughs> I got yes. you. I got you, girl. You boudoir. boudoir <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking notes while you talk and my words say boudoir, sweating, women's empowerment. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like Funniest. my bio. That should be the bio. <laughs> Taco Tuesday's sweaty boudoir empowerment. Yes. 
<laughs> That's our title. <laughs> our title for this interview. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like what is this <laughs> yeah I gotta know what that's about yeah well favorite things your favorite book oh my gosh so I know we mentioned this but I had just read everybody always by Bob Goff and I love the full title because it's everybody always becoming love in a world full of setbacks and difficult people I was like yeah you did Bob Goff like I just love it <laughs> it is a great read I'm also currently reading Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. And I kind of wonder, like, if she has a ticker on her thing of how many people mention her book as like a, you have to read this. Like, I would think she has that somewhere. Seriously. Seriously. Do you know how many guests on this podcast alone talk about Brene Brown? That's nuts. Oh, that is nuts. She's amazing. Yeah. She's done something right. Good book. And your favorite happiness tool? I think for me, it is remembering to take a break. Like, mm -hmm. I just have to remember to take a pause for like my self care and for my husband's like we do little breaks where when you have a rough week or it's crazy in your life and we just say, hey, do you need to go see your friends? Or in my case, do you need a pedicure? And we just go do that and then come back kind of really refreshed. <laughs> That's really good. And I like how you're making sure your husband takes breaks. I did not figure out to do that until about, well, a couple of years ago when he was too stressed to function. Then I realized, oh, self-care for the man too. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Like it can be, I think with my husband too, like you said, he can be a little bit like always giving. Mm -hmm. So it can be hard to see, but yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite easy meal? So I know somebody's mentioned this before, but I love the HelloFresh. Like, I just love it. We have friends who they travel all the time. And one time they mentioned like, hey, have you ever tried this? And we did. And one of my new goals has kind of been to have dinner when my husband comes in about three or four days a week. So that's what we do. And it's great. And it I love trying new things. Like my husband could eat tacos every day and not that tacos aren't amazing, but I like kind of the different stuff and mm -hmm. it's awesome. Mm, Hello Fresh. They are good. I liked that box service. I also like Factor 75. One of my good ones. Favorite kitchen gadget and life hack. Oh my gosh. So we got a snow cone maker Ooh. for my daughter. Yeah. Yeah, it's the silliest little thing and it just crushes up ice, but she loves it. And she actually like goes over and is like, snow, snow, snow. Aww. And it's so cute. And she just loves like popsicles, anything like that. So my husband came home with it one day and he's like, I've solved all of our problems. And it's amazing. Like, we just love it. Oh, he is truly a hero guy, isn't he? To think of that. <laughs> that's so thoughtful. Okay. And your favorite life hack? So this was something we had talked about in one of the groups. Sometimes my husband and I can kind of be like ships in the night, especially on weekends. And like I said, he has his Saturday checklist and usually I'm gone on Saturdays. So one of the things we had this silly idea and it's to put a magnetic whiteboard on the fridge. And if he ever wants or needs something, he puts it up there. And <laughs> the funny thing is sometimes it's like, I need smooches. Like it'll turn into that or like today I need hugs. But sometimes... It's funny how our brains process things because he'll be like, registration is due for the car. This is due. And I'll be like, be more aware of our daughter's feelings. Like, they're just really funny. But it's really helped us to kind of communicate things that maybe you wouldn't say to the other person. You can put on the board and you, if I'm ever like frustrated or nervous about something, be like, hey, I'm really nervous about this. Can you just remember to give me a hug in the morning? And oh, that's sweet. You guys are good. This is amazing. So it's just a whiteboard? So it's a little whiteboard and he actually, he says he's not creative, but I love when he does things like this. He comes up and he writes board of knowledge and desires on it. So that's what we call our board of knowledge. And desires. <laughs> I think I heard you tell me this before sometime, maybe it was in the club or something. Do you remember mentioning mm -hmm. this? I love that. I'm going to get one. I get so many ideas. I have a post-it note with all my ideas and now that's going on. I might want a board of knowledge and desires. <laughs> I'll tell him it's growing. It's totally growing. When is his and your podcast starting? Because I think it'll be fun. <laughs> now you have a microphone too. I know. Now I have a little snowball I can talk to him. Talk <laughs> into. He, he would just love to buy all of the equipment. I don't know if he would. He's really funny and I think he could totally do it. But like he would just be really jazzed to set up the office. Is like what he's really excited about. That's great. Well, everyone, we're going to have links to everything we talked about. The books and um, 
the snow cone maker maybe even, at jenriday.com slash 195. Okay, Rachel, two questions left. What does it mean for you? What is your formula for being a vibrant, happy woman? So for me, I would say it's closeness to God. Because when I am close to God and I make time for prayer and gratitude, I just show up as a different woman. I just am. And my friends have told me that before too. They're like, I can tell that you have been connected. Like it just shows. And it shows, I think, in the way that you serve people and in the way that you connect with others. So what does that routine look like for you and the length of time you're spending on prayer and gratitude? Because, you know, everyone does it differently, but it might inspire some of us. Oh, yeah, that would be so cool. For me, I like to do that in the morning. I love your podcasts and I love your meditations. So if I have extra time, that makes my day go so much better. So instead of like, I don't know, I think as a mom, sometimes you can feel like Indiana Jones, like before he pulls the idol out and the balls rolling at him, you know, in the morning. If you can start your day, I think a little bit slower, if you can pray, if you can do a meditation and just spend like a little bit of time on yourself, wash your face, whatever, like that's kind of my time. And then I feel like I just go into my day better. Mm -hmm. So in your morning routine, what order do you tend to do things? I love if I have my phone next to me, then I will do a meditation, a prayer, and then my feet hit the floor, try and get a little bit of water, wash my face, brush my teeth. Like, then my day starts really great. Hmm. And you think just that little bit of investment in yourself is what gives you that energy that other people notice? Oh, for sure. Like having that time to be connected and I think just a little bit more thoughtful Mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, Rachel, this has been amazing and inspiring. I like that you invest in yourself first every morning. Let's have one challenge from you to everyone listening. So my challenge for listeners this week would definitely be to give it to God. There are going to be highs and lows, faults and failures, strengths and weaknesses. But whatever it is, if you've got motherhood on your mind, business on your mind, you can do it. I think just realizing that it's not all on your shoulders is a great thing. So I would just challenge anyone out there who is maybe looking to faith, anything like that, just realize that it's it's not really all on your shoulders and there's someone there to bear it with you. Mm-hmm. Give it to God. It reminds me of that quote, life is happening for you, not to you. To trust yeah. that process. Yeah, that's so good. Rachel, thank you so much for being on the show, especially for being a light. I can feel your good energy and I know you're bringing good things to the world. So we will watch out for you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jen. So Rachel has really good energy. I love that about her. In fact, there's so many women with amazing energy. And I remember the days when I, like Rachel, was a new mom and everything felt a little more overwhelming than maybe it would now if I tried it again, (laughs) because I had to learn and I had to step from one level of energy to another and learn, oh, I can do this. And one of the most important things that has helped me with that, with raising my energy and my vibration and being a more positive, happy, energized person is being around other people who do the same thing. Learning that really a lot of times it's a choice, not always. Sometimes we need help or therapy or medication to pull up into that higher energy place. Don't get me wrong. But just being around other bubbly, vibrant, positive people helps you pull on, put on the same level of energy, kind of like clothes. We tend to be like the five people we interact with most. And I hope that you enjoyed hearing from Rachel and that you're going to also commit to, like her, shift into the energy of focusing on other people just a little more in a way that feels aligned and in a way that makes you happy. Now, if you want to spend even more time around higher vibe people, you might want to join us now in the Vibrant Happy Women Club because we are going to be doing some amazing things throughout 2020. Every single month, I release a brand new happiness tool that you can use to better balance your time, to lift your mood, to be a better parent, to have greater closeness and connection in your marriage or your relationship. All of the things I teach in the club become tools in your tool belt to make you feel more on your game, more capable, more successful, and especially more vibrant and happy. We would love to have you. You can join us. You can learn more at vibranthappywomenclub.com. 
Well, I will be back again later this week, sharing a few more thoughts on that energy of love and service, the perfect topic for this holiday time. Until then, I hope you make it a vibrant and happy week. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast at www.jenriday.com.